Whenever I'm making a project that involves gluing together solid boards to make panels, I like to start with that just to get it out of the way and have plenty of time for the glue to dry. I'll use four boards to make the top and three boards to make the lower shelf. As always, I'll shave a little bit off of one edge of each of these boards to square it up. Then I can flip that board around and rip it down to its exact width. The best part about gluing up your own panels from solid wood is arranging the boards to find the most pleasing grain pattern and color. Honestly, this could kind of make or break a project. So take the time to look at the boards and arrange them in different patterns and just kind of see what looks best because you'll definitely notice when one board just looks completely out of place. So looking at these cherry boards, one of the things I really like is sapwood. This is this lighter color band that's running through this board and a little bit on this board. So if I put these two pieces together like this, it almost looks like a continuous band running through there. Whereas if I had just put this board like here, that seam is just so stark, it's definitely out of place. So it's best to Put it like this and then the secondary thing i'm looking for is grain that seems to flow if you have some boards that will have like here on this side the grain is kind of coming off at a sharper angle it just wouldn't look good that way so i've decided to put it in like that and obviously it'll never be completely seamless but you can certainly make it look intentional You're probably surprised that I'm actually prepared for this glue up. <laughs> Usually I go running around scrambling to find clamps and everything after I've already put the glue on. But this time, this time, I'm gonna do it properly. I've got the clamps already set up there, okay? I can tighten them down, just gently tighten them down. And then look, I've got my, I've got my calls here, my flattening calls, so they can slide under there. You know what I forgot to do? <laughs> I should have put some two by fours under here so that I can get clamps under these. Okay, let's do that. All right. I knew I shouldn't have said something. You following me, camera guy? <laughs> okay, now we're in business. All right. Yeah, something like that, all right? All right. And this is where the magic happens, right here. Clamp these suckers down and flattens that whole panel up. Look at that, look how flat that is. All right, now I can tighten these down a little bit. Remember what I always say, you want it tight, just not too tight. I never say that. You know what, I think I can take this two by four out now. Good thing I have these four foot long clamps to clamp this thing that's about five inches. Let me test my work. Ooh yeah, that's flat. Perfect. Everything I do is always perfect. And you can too. I'll put a couple clamps on this top side too, just for grins. You know what they say about clamps? You can always have just the exact number you need. Something like that. What do you think of that? You wanna get a swooping close-up view of this? Here you go. There you go. And look, and look, there's, there's me, me recording, recording me. me. Okay, so I got both of these panels sanded down. What I'm gonna do is set these aside and I'll square them up and cut them down to their final sizes later. So I'm gonna use this maple board to make the four legs and this one's gonna be the cross pieces to join them together. What I wanna do is cut some dados in here now to make half lap joints that these are gonna to join together with. I've got a stack of dado blades in my table saw but it's gonna be easier to cut those dados first and then rip out the legs rather than the other way around. Well, I don't know if it's gonna be easier but it'll probably be more accurate.
Now I can just glue these together. The nice thing about these lap joints is that they just kind of square themselves up. There's the two leg assemblies. Now what I need to do is connect these together by making the two drawer enclosures. So I need to drill pocket holes in two of these long pieces and all four of these short pieces. Two of these long pieces are gonna be for the drawer front. So I wanna pick out the nicest two for those because these other two are really just gonna be in the back. There's not a lot of difference between these three, but both of these have a little bit of a discoloration here and here so I find that interesting so I'm going to use these for the front and I'll just set these aside for now. So what I'm going to do is glue these two short pieces in these leg assemblies and they're also going to need some reinforcement. I'll get to that in a minute because this end grain alone isn't going to be strong enough to hold this together. The important part here is that these pocket holes are facing up because that's what's going to attach the top. So I cut out this scrap piece of plywood to use as a spacer and put that there. And then this is going to be for that lower shelf. So what I'm doing is I'm going to drill some holes into the end grain through these side pieces and glue in some dowels to give it that extra strength. You could certainly use pocket screws on these pieces here also to hold it in if you didn't want to use these dowels. I just think that the dowels kind of look nice, they add a nice little touch and they give it some extra support. Okay, now I can join these two leg assemblies with these two cross pieces that go in the back. So the only thing you need to do here is decide which do you want the front to be and these two look the nicest, so they're gonna be the front. The backs look pretty nice too. So what I'm gonna do is just use the pocket screws to join these together. And since this is hardwood, that I'm using for this project, I'm gonna be using the fine thread screws. That's pretty important. If you're using a pine or other kind of soft wood, you can use the coarse thread screws. I can use that spacer again, just to make sure that this lines up with the side pieces. So one of the reasons I'm using pocket screws on these with no glue is because I may need to loosen these up to get that lower shelf to fit in place. We'll see how it goes. Boom! Just like that, it's starting to look like a thing. <laughs> I need this shelf to fit inside of here. It needs to come right to the each edge here, but I wanna take a measurement on this back side because that's firmly attached. The, if I take a measurement on the front here, there could be a little bit of give. I'm using this little cutoff piece to mark out where I need to cut these notches. So you could absolutely cut out these notches just using a handheld jigsaw, which is totally what I would have done before I got this fancy pants bandsaw. Yeah, I was right. It turns out there is no way I'm gonna get this in here without loosening that up. So I wanna point out this hole back here, I drilled it just in case I would need it because 
Sometimes this top panel might have a little bit of a bow in it or something, and that can help draw it down. But if it's sitting flat, you don't need to use a screw in that hole. It's probably better not to have it. The whole idea with these pocket screws, by the very nature of the, the hole itself, on this board is that it allows expansion and contraction a little bit in this direction of the panel. So a panel this small is gonna have very little expansion and contraction, but I did leave a little bit of a gap here on this notch for this to move out this way and same on this side if it needs to. Of course, the front can just come out however it wants. But really don't drive yourself crazy worrying too much about the expansion and contraction on a panel that's this narrow. Even in a really humid and dry place, that expansion and contraction is gonna be real minimal, like a 16th of an inch at best. I'm using my router to create chamfered edges along the top panel. These really help to give it a crisp, clean, finished appearance. So I can attach the top the same way as I did that lower shelf. This time I'll just turn it upside down and center it. This right angle attachment for my drill is one of the most useful tools in my shop. I'm gonna glue and tack these tiny drawer runners into place. If you don't have a brad nailer, just glue these into place, just clamp them down. But having a brad nailer certainly speeds up this process. I guess it would make more sense to turn it around this way. These drawer runners don't have to extend all the way to the back for the drawers to still work effectively. The important thing is to make sure that the front of this drawer runner is flush with the leg. That's also gonna act as a drawer stop. I'm cutting out 16 thin slats for the shoe rack. So to attach these slats, I'll just start by gluing down the two outside ones, the two inside ones, and then the four in the middle, I could just eyeball. To make the drawer boxes, measure the distance between that drawer runner and the shelf above it, and then just leave yourself a small one millimeter, 16th of an inch gap. I'm making these drawer boxes out of half inch plywood. This is about the only scrap that I have, and the grain is actually going the opposite direction that I would prefer it to go, but they're just drawers, it doesn't really matter, and I'd rather use this scrap of wood rather than buy a new sheet of plywood. I always build my drawer boxes by using rabbit joints to hold them together. What I like to do is measure the fronts of the boxes and those are gonna be the pieces that have the rabbit joints on them that the side pieces fit into. I prefer to do it that way rather than the other way around because that way I can get a really nice measurement for the front whereas the depth of the of the drawer isn't quite as important. You'll see what I mean here in a second. First, I just need to measure the opening here and then again, take just a 16th of an inch off of total. So it's like a 32nd of an inch on each side. That's all it needs for that drawer to open and close. Say like a half a millimeter on each side. Then I can cut out the four short side pieces. I've installed a stack of dado blades into my table saw along with a sacrificial fence. First I'll cut a rabbit along one long edge of all of these pieces. This is gonna hold the bottoms in place. Then I'll cut a half inch rabbit on the ends of the long pieces, the fronts and backs. Here's another tool I find essential in my shop. It's this strap clamp. I use it all the time for basically making any kind of box, including drawers. So what I wanna do here is just dry assemble this so that I can get an accurate measurement for the bottom. So this clamp will just draw these corners together. 
and those rabbit joints help keep it square. And so I just need the in measurement on the inside of those rabbit joints. This is quarter inch plywood I'm using for the bottoms. You could certainly use half inch if you wanted. So here's what I was talking about earlier and why I like to have the rabbit on the end of the face of the drawers rather than on the sides because then the sides can just fit in like that. If I'd cut the rabbit on the sides and then the front had been just flush, then I would have to cut the front to kind of a more exact measurement to make sure that it fits in that rabbit. It's just a lot easier and a lot more accurate just to cut the front to its full length and then worry about this. Now I can cut down these two drawer faces to their exact width. So they're just gonna get mounted to the front here with a lip underneath for pulling on. And I'll put a chamfer around the front face of each of these. So what I wanna do is glue these faces so that they're flush with the top of the drawer, and then there's just gonna be this lip on the underside. So when I designed this, I saw this as kind of a staging area for starting your day. The drawers can hold accessories or even jewelry, and there's room for your shoes that you most frequently wear. But mostly I think it's versatile enough to use it however you like. By the way, the reason why I used the cherry and maple was to complement the two nightstands I made in a previous video. Check that video out if you like this project. And of course, if you'd like to make this project, you can get plans over at shopwwmm.com. Thanks for watching.